So, uh, how you doing? Uh, my name is Brett Brown, and I'm with uh, Relationship Science. Um, so the focus of our talk is more uh, how we expanded and built into AWS uh, from scratch without having to uh, really move or even touch our current infrastructure that was more in a, a traditional data center. Um, so a bit about relationship science to start up so you kind of get an idea of what, we're, what we had to deal with. Um, we're a relationship mapping and business development platform. Um, basically, we have a, a lot of uh, uh, profiled people, so about you know, 8 million individuals that we've collected public data for some financial data, work, uh, where they work, what boards they might be on. So uh, this is a, a lot of static data, um, which was a very good use case for us moving this to, to AWS quickly. Um, we have a lot of tools that allow you to search for these people or organizations. Um, you can find, you know, based on you giving us contacts, uh, we will tell you how you can connect to other companies and how you can connect through a, a path knowing how, who they know. So basically it gives you an idea of seeing who you're connected to and how you can get to somebody else. Um, a lot of this is a lot of searching tools. Um, say I'm going to a city, who do I know there, who can I visit or catch up with? If uh, uh, our power search tool provides you many different metrics that you can search on and uh, find which ones you're, you're looking for. So, that's the, the, the background of, our, of our most, most of our data. Um, so what's our use case for this, though? Um, basically, our current infrastructure ran in traditional data center provider. Um, we decided we wanted to launch a new product. Uh, traditionally, we were a solely enterprise product. So w with that, you have a lot of advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one of those advantages is having you know a very set client base or knowing when your users come on. You, uh, you know, our, for our use case, we're mainly in the United States for most of our clients, so peaks nine to five, you don't have any odd times, like maybe with, like, with FanDuel came before, a lot more load coming up at odd times. So that was very consistent for us, and we knew what we were doing when it came to that part of it. Um, but in building a, a public-facing site, we knew there was a lot of new uh, problems that we might face from that with our current infrastructure. We don't, you don't know what parts might hit more, when people are going to be on the most, and also just the user base in general. Um, you know, we in the, say, t uh, several thousand Alex, uh, previous clients, but now, you know, you'll see uh, later with our AWS, with a new public facing site, we get a couple million hits a month, which is orders more magnitude than what our current infrastructure can handle. Um, so this gives us a, a uh, you know, what the problem we had there. So at this point, it was, well, do we want to build out our current infrastructure, which was all uh, Microsoft-based, SQL Server, .NET, um, and how many, how many more servers on our current load are we actually going to, be able to handle that? Um, when it came down to it, we decided that we didn't really want to get stuck into our current provider uh, and, and keep building out there. We wanted to we thought we'd we'll check out AWS. Everybody's been talking about it. This is you know, several years ago. Uh, sort of like, this is probably what we think will be best, and it's, it's turned out to be quite helpful. So as I was saying, you know, the, the, basically the workload is not going to be as predictable as it was. So as we kind of uh, mentioned before, we have this profile data for uh, the, the, the public data that our users are searching for. Um, for the most part, We'll, we'll call it static just because it's, it's changing a bunch on our back end, but for a user, each user is seeing the same type of data for each one of these profiles. Here's what we ended up deciding to do. We realized, oh, well, we have a very robust API currently uh, that we've built out for our enterprise users. Let's utilize that for ourselves. For, for, uh, at this point, we had not used our own API for ourselves, uh, but it turned out this was came out to be uh, quite helpful. We had to you know, add a couple new methods, but the work on that is very minimal compared to anything else that we had considered. So this is the, the general idea of it. We're, set, we're sending items to an AWS uh, SQS queue. Uh, Lambda is kind of picking up and processing those and pulling that data from our RailSight API. And we'll sh show that in a little diagram here. So basically what we utilize in, on our 
you know, our external I'm calling an external service your external debt AWS. There are our, our, our current enterprise servers. Um, we have lots of processing going on. That's you know, picking up data changes, merging them into, and standardizing the data for our profiles. So we already had that system in place where we can queue off of when data changes come in. So utilizing that, um, we just made a new call, a, a call that just sends sends the basically the entity ID for that entity to an SQS queue. Um, that SQS queue, uh, you know, connected to Lambda there, it pulls our API, uh, stores it solely in JSON. Uh, in a giant layer of ElastiCache. <laughs> it's basically just an entity ID and a giant JSON object for the whole profile. Um, with this, then, once it's in the ElastiCache, we have, you know, we're using a e couple EC2 instances in Route 53 for the actual site. It's written in PHP. Um, but that is basically just loading the entire JSON profile out of the ElastiCache. So anytime that we get another data change, it gets queued up, and you know, with the, the way this is going, it basically, it's within 30 seconds the profile on AWS is, is updated. Now, this, this works great for the, you know, the, the public data that's on there for profile data, every user seeing the same thing. But we need a little bit more you know, uh, for our, to allow our users to make it a little bit more interactive. So one of the services that we provide is, is news alerts. Um, the way we make it, you know, the way it's considered a little bit different than, say, Google News Alerts is that we very much look over our data and verify what entities are tagged to different news articles. Um, and users can sign up and, you know, choose a profile, a person that they want to follow, an organization, or, uh, you know, for enterprise clients, we allow them to actually create a, a a power search list, for example, that will change based on the search criteria. So you might be getting news alerts on a new person or new, new uh, organization as the, as the things change on your search criteria. Um, so how do we handle that for our user settings? Basically, kind of the reverse of what we were just doing. <laughs> I'll, I'll just show you in a uh, diagram here. The basically user says, OK, uh, I now you know, I want to follow this new, uh, I want to get now get alerts for this new um, person that I'd like to follow. So what we're doing is we're using uh, DynamoDB on the AWS side. Again, very similar to just being a JSON store. We're not doing anything uh, fancy with this here in, a, in, in storing multiple objects. We're just solely storing a JSON object in DynamoDB that is quickly pulled on, on that site and, and store there for the user on our, on our free site, on the AWS side. Uh, and what that does is adds it to a different SQS queue when a change has occurred. And now our existing uh, servers that we had will pick up the same SQS queue, uh, pull out that message, and store that in our, on our existing current infrastructure. And, what is, and you know, on our current infrastructure is where we then process these alerts and send them out. Say you're saying the setting there. Now externally, already use that new for alert processing. Um, so this is kind of a quick uh, diagram of, the, of basically the two combined. We had we so you know we originally had all this our entire infrastructure and all our processing set up on our in our current data center that would have been a whole lot of work to to end up migrating. So enable for us to quickly develop, build up this new public site that can take so much more. Load uh, basically, you know, we're getting. I think I said before, one or two million hits, which is orders of magnitude higher than what our uh, than what we get from our current infrastructure. So basically, two different SQS queues. Um, now this is coming from none of us had any w AWS experience before. Um, at first, it can be a bit intimidating <laughs> when you see all the different types of services that are running uh, or that that AWS provides, and you know, like I don't even know where to get started. <laughs> so. We found we're just dealing with three or f simply three or four of the different services. We're able to get a full-fledged site uh, up and running with able to handle uh, this basically the new workload. Um, so, you know, the the main benefits for us on this was it's not always easy to scale uh, with the existing with the existing hardware. Again, a couple of things for us. We had a couple of different things. We didn't want to get locked in further. 
scaling up our current SQL servers were, we already scaled up pretty good amount, would, be, would have been quite the additional amount of workload uh, for our team. We're a better team of like uh, 12 developers, so to get that much more going would have been a lot of manpower and would have had to cut, uh, you know, basically hold off many other projects. So the, uh, you know, this is one way that we were able to do it without basically moving our existing hardware at all, just add a couple API methods, really, and that is how we're able to move that over. Um, again, Elastic Cache and DynamoDB are pretty much the, and SQS message queues are really the main parts of what we're using. Um, so it was a quick way for us to get the whole benefit of AWS, and, that, and as we're doing that now, we're moving other things over for other projects. Uh, but this is how we're able to get those going.